Uh, yeah, welcome back, Anthony. Bright and early. Happy to yep. see you here. Let's talk some Pirates prospects. Sounds How you good. doing? Doing good. Doing good. Another great morning. How you guys doing this morning? Lovely. Yeah, we're doing yeah. we're doing pretty good. Talking about some 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 baseball. Um, always good. Always good time. It is. It was a. Uh, it was an interesting week in the minor league system too. I was I was paying a lot of attention. A lot of a lot of good stuff seems to be happening down there. Yeah, yeah. There's some some stuff going. It was a it was a weird weird week because we talk about like you know the uh, the Pirates waited until the midseason point to call up uh, McAdoo and. You kind of figure they call it McAdoo and then like a, a, a pitcher that was doing real, real well. And you kind of think maybe Greensboro would start struggling. Greensboro went five and one against a really good team last week. And then Altoona went one and five. So kind of the opposite of what we kind of expected. But yeah, I mean, sounds like, like Al- sounds like Altoona could still use some help. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I guess let's kind of get into it. I mean, there there were some promotions. So I mean, you mentioned like Charles McAdoo mm-hmm. being promoted to Altoona, um, but but yeah, let's kind of dive in here. Uh, two hitters, two pitchers. Who do who do we got? Who we got this week? We'll start on the uh, the the pitching side, and I guess it's another week, and it's a uh, another little uh, Bubba Chandler conversation that needs to be had there because he's um mm-hmm. he he's just he's just on another another level right now, and. I, I talked about it over the weekend um, on the site. It's like, obviously now Paul Skeens graduates, you know, he's, he's not technically a prospect anymore. I think it's pretty easy to say that Bubba Chandler is the, the top prospect left in, in the pirate system at this point. I kind of put it a little bit further. It's like, what is his ceiling? Just like, you know, like the Orioles have had like the last couple top hitting prospects or top prospects overall. I feel like there's a point by the end of the season that I think Bubba might be in that conversation to be the the best pitching prospect in all of baseball with, with the way he's going. And I kind of looked at the names ahead of him on Baseball America. There's quite a bit of names there, but there's a lot of names there that's like, okay, well, these guys are – they're they're okay, but they're kind of like high floor guys, and they're mm-hmm. there because they're more safe picks. So, like, Bubba can easily pass those guys. You have another, another guy, a couple guys that's been hurt, Another couple that probably will graduate. I, I I think he continues his pace. It's very easy to put a scenario out there to where he's the top pitching prospect, if not at like the end of the season, going into next year, maybe. Yeah, um, especially like I mean, if you're, if you're just looking like right-handed pitchers too, right? Um, yeah. He's he's been so impressive. Uh, it, it's it's kind of cool to just see his development because he came into the system so raw. Um, you saw him struggle, especially with his command, you know, through the lower levels. He's gotten to double A pretty quick for someone for someone as raw as he has. He's moved through the yeah. system at a very quick pace. And yeah, his last few stuff ever since coming off the IL, really like he, he hit the IL for a bit there in Altoona came off and he's been he's been incredible since then. Uh, 11 strikeouts in six and two thirds uh, innings last week against um Akron. Mm-hmm. So just just dominating lineups. The the game before that he went seven scoreless with ten strikeouts. Yeah. Um he I gotta had, imagine, yeah, I gotta imagine he stays in Altoona, but like he's looking I mean, really good. I, I will say this. They moved Jared Jones up pretty quick last year to to AAA. Mm-hmm. And without trying to like put down Jared Jones at the expense of Bubba Chandler, I don't think Jared Jones ever looked this good in Altoona. Right. And yeah. He, he, I mean, he had his moments and, and like, I, if I remember correctly, he did, he was dealing with a, like a little bit of a nagging injury during while he was in Altoona. So like maybe that kind of limited his output, but what we're seeing from Bubba is, and we see what Jerry Jones is doing in the majors right now. Like, I don't think there's ever, there was ever a stretch. And I've, I've been, I watched the first ever professional pitch from Jerry Jones. I've kind of been following him along from, from, I don't think I've ever seen a streak or a stretch from Jerry Jones that I've seen from that. What we're seeing from Bubba Chandler right now, like just every, like the fastball is just elite, like 
elite level stuff. It's perfect shape that you want to see for the guys who like shape upper nineties. The changeup is probably up, like right there up with it, maybe just as good as his fastball. The slider, the breaking ball, the curveball, the, that's all coming along and stuff like that. Just this month alone, he, he and like you mentioned, like the the command and control. He's he's only walked three people in twenty five innings in June, and then struck out thirty five. So it, it's just all kind of coming together. And I mean, he's twenty one, so like you could you could make a very easy argument that just okay, just let him pitch in Double A the whole year. You could also make like an argument at this point, like I mean, they pushed Derek Jones up for a lot less and a lot like he was already in. He was already, I, I, if I remember, he was already in AAA pretty much by now, mm-hmm. Jeff Jones. So you could also make a case that, like, okay, well, there isn't much here that Bubba can do in AA that he can't just do in, in AAA now, too. Right. Yeah, it's it's been impressive to see him. That's that's for sure. And yeah, I mean, it's a good comparison. Like Jerry Jones made ten starts in AA, mm-hmm. and then and then got bumped up. Now his his results were better than Bubba Chandler's. Like I, I feel like you know Jerry Jones never got hit hard. He never really yeah. he never really struggled yeah. in Double A at all. Yeah. Bubba did sh- struggle a little bit there at times early on in the year, but lately there's there's no struggling. Like he's just dominating yeah. these guys. No, yeah. And, and I feel like too, like when you look at Bubba Chandler, like you see the overall number, like the four seventeen ERA, and that's not exciting, you know. Like eh. That, this is Bubba Chandler. This you're you're talking about the guy who might be the best pitcher, you know, as far as minor leaguers go, um, prospects. But like, kind of look at his numbers here. We talked about the injury before he went to IL. He had those back to back starts where he gave up uh, five earned and four earned, right, in a total of four point one innings. Mm-hmm. That just like totally wrecked his ERA in that yeah. sense because you look at that. That he's never given up more than two earned runs in a start outside of his June thirteenth yeah. start. Yeah, every start. Yeah. Outside of that, has been two runs or less. Uh, and you talk about the walks too; like his control has been e- even better. You know, he like his first four starts, he walked two batters each time, which is fine. Like that's that's fine. But like since then, it's only one or less walks outside of those two back to back starts before the injury too. You know, it's like one batter's walking zero guys. Like it, it's becoming impressive. Like the the total stat line doesn't do him justice. No. Yeah. No, and, and I think another thing to remember too, and this is something that I, I, I've mentioned probably on the, like I said, I, I don't like putting people down for the sake of like lifting others up, but, and this has been a whole, like I, there's a Baseball America article about it too, that like, it, it feels like defense is like way down uh, across the minors and stuff like right right now. And I think, I think a lot of the pitchers in the system are getting punished in a, in a sense for the fact that, the defense is hasn't been up to up to par as to what maybe you would expect, and that's led to some like inflated ERA numbers and stuff like that. And, and I know like someone like like Thomas Harrington, he he's suffered from that a little bit in a couple of the games that have looked a little bit rough. Like he he was like a one pitch a pitch or two from getting out of it. It was kind of like a routine grounder or something like that, and it wasn't made, but it's it still wasn't enough to be charged an error so like when you look at the stat sheet is um it, it looks like it was on the pitcher but like whenever you open up the the video and look back at the game it like that play should have definitely been made kind of thing yeah so so <clears throat> yeah definitely exciting to see bubba um who else we got what, what else we got pitching wise Another guy who's kind of bounced back the last couple of games. Um, and Greensboro was fun this week because not a lot of the uh, the streams have like a velocity re- reading. So we were actually get, able to see how hard some of these guys were throwing. And I think the guy that we we're the most interested in seeing what the velocity looked like was Hunter Barco because he only averaged like 90 in Bradenton last year. He went to the spring breakout, was hitting 94, 95. And we we're like, okay, was, was that a, because it was only one inning, was he amped up because of the situation? Was it going to drop back down once he's throwing more pitches? He only threw 58. He threw five no-hit innings, nine strikeouts in a start. But I think the most impressive thing was he was 94-95. He was, he was 93-94 the entire game, getting up to 95. He hit 95 in the last inning he pitched. So that kind of 
So like before then, he, you know, even going into this year, he was still an interesting pitcher because of the slider and the changeup and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But now the fastball kind of takes him to like a whole new level. And if he's maintaining that velocity deeper into the games, that kind of just elevates him to like a new level of of like prospect status at that point. Right. He's a lot more intriguing with that velocity than, than just 90. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's been he's been really good. Uh, fifteen games so far for Greensboro, and 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 like some of them, like he he came out of the bullpen for for a couple of them, but it's been seven outings where he hasn't given up a run. Uh, in this last start, nine strikeouts, one walk, and in five innings. Like you mentioned, just fifty fifty eight pitches, fifty nine pitches. Like that's that's just that's when like, he's it's unfair. Like he's he's dominating these hitters. He is uh he is twenty three. Um. In my opinion, I think Hunter Barco has shown everything he needs to in Greensboro. I I would be aggressive with him. Like he's he's he pitched in the SEC. Just just get him in the Double A already. But what's 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 interesting about all these pitchers? I feel like I feel like every single one of these these starting pitchers that they've that they've picked, especially these college the college guys too. But they're just all they're all just coming around. They're all coming around. They all look good. And as a, as a fan of the major league team, right, the one thing it, it makes me very confident and comfortable trading these guys. Like I feel like right now the Pirates have figured out pitching development. Like they've whatever it is, like they've figured it out. Every single one of these guys that they're picking is pitching well. So as a fan, it's like you know what we can afford to give up some arms because. We've got plenty of them, and we've clearly got something figured out where we can we can get the best out of these guys, and and just n- n- next year's draft will just replace them. Like I think that's that's where I'm at right now. Um, like they've got all these arms, and Bubba Chandler was one where I was like, you know what, I would give him up for like a, a stud. I may I may Bubba Chandler may have been just reached that that untouchable list for me this past week. He's he's ridiculously good. But um yeah, I just it's it's really cool to see these pitchers succeed just across the board, top to bottom from the from the, from all levels of this organization. And it gives you it gives you confidence to say, you know what, I can move on from Hunter Barco. I can move on from Braxton Ashcraft. Because there's other people doing the exact same thing um that that's kind of my my two cents on it no yeah yeah i think that's i mean a lefty who could throw mid 90s and stuff like that that's going to have a lot of value and stuff like that um they've been kind of taking it easy within the last last couple of weeks and stuff like that yeah you know, this is his first full year back from from like tommy john so um i think that was why because like the the pitch limit and stuff like that they're getting ready to go in the all-star break pirates have had quite a few pitchers end up on the injured list over the last couple of weeks. Like half of, half of Bradenton's rotations, like on the injured list right now. Right. So they're kind of trying, kind of getting hit hard now, which to an extent almost feels like maybe that could be why they've been a little bit slow with some of the, the promotions. You know, they can't really move Barco up right now because they don't have anyone in greens. They don't have enough arms in greens in uh, Bradenton right now to slide up and, and take his spot if they move him. Mm-hmm. So, and also, too, like you keep padding stats and stuff like that. Maybe that looks a little bit better in a potential trade as opposed to maybe moving him up to double A and maybe he starts getting beat up a little bit. So, yeah, maybe. Well, yeah, it's uh, it's it's been it's been a really cool development to see these pitchers pitch well. Um, like I said every, everybody that you like hope to see take steps forward is doing it. Like it's just yeah. Pretty cool. Um, all right. So pitchers, Barco, Chandler. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about the the hitters. What uh, what do we got on the offensive side? Well, I got one guy who I know we're all going to get excited about when I bring him up, and that's uh, Mitch Jed had a had a pretty oh, good week man. last night. <laughs> um, he went nine for seventeen, scored eleven runs, and then walked six times with with like a with stolen base. And that was just all in one week. So he's finally starting to get on base a little bit, starting to like kind of 
do his thing. Scored eleven times. Green's hard. Like, a, like I mentioned earlier, they went five and five and one. They they scored a lot of runs that weekend, and he was on base a lot for a lot of it. So so really good. Um, really um, really solid week for him. I mean, he's uh he's had an okay June. Like he's finally like he June he had a one hundred five WRC plus. So finally a little bit above average kind of thing. It, you the numbers like if you kind of stack them month by month and stuff like that they are starting to look a little bit better it looks like he's starting to get to his game a little bit more maybe mm-hmm. there was a little bit added like okay well i'm in greensboro let me try to take advantage of being in greensboro yeah swings early on and that was leading to a lot of swing and miss and and, and stuff like that but um yeah it it's it's still a little bit hard to get excited for him um just because of like the the lack of power and, and, and stuff like that, but right. we're starting to see maybe what they wanted, what they were excited about in him when they drafted him. You know, get on base, use the speed, and um, score a bunch of runs because you turned a single or a walk into a double by stealing second, mm-hmm. or even stealing third at times, kind of thing. Yeah, you can tell he's definitely getting on base. He's hitting. I mean, they're all singles. <laughs> That's uh, like he's just yeah. he's yeah. just hitting singles. But he's getting on base. Uh, he's scoring runs. He's he he walked a bunch this past week too. So yeah, it was a productive week for him. You still hope to see something because like if you're if you're a slap hitting, like if if all you're gonna do is hit singles, then you better hit a ton of singles. You know, yeah. like. Uh, you're, you're, you're two, he was, he hit 253 for the month of June with 17 singles and 20 hits, right? Two doubles, one triple. So <laughs> it's, it's still like, yeah, it's technically fine, but like he needs to be, if you're, if all you're going to do is hit singles and you got to hit 330 in Greensboro, yeah. like, yeah, yeah. And he's not doing that. No, did last week. <laughs> yeah. He had a really good week. And like I said, Greensboro. They need, and I feel like I, I I'll keep saying it with it there. Like I feel like he's done fine at second base, but really, if, if they want to just get more value out of him, like he just needs to be in the outfield. Like they like Brannigan was hurt a little bit for a little bit, so they've kind of forced him to have Tamar and Jeb split time at shortstop, and neither of them are are, are shortstops, and you can he's barely a second baseman and stuff like that. I think you can salvage some value out of it right. by throwing him in center. Cause he, he is fast. He does have plus speed. So. Mm. I feel yeah. Like I think eventually that's where he, me. yeah, I think eventually that's probably his best landing spot. And you just hope that you just hope that he hits enough. Yeah. Really? So. Yeah. All right. So Mitch Jeb, it was like my least favorite draft pick ever. So that's, I know, that's, that's why I was when I was going through last week. I was like, "Oh, this will be fun." Five minutes talking about him, but yeah. All right, <laughs> who else? Who else we got? <laughs> all right, so we're gonna go all the way down to the complex. All right, the guy who I've been very impressed with, just because maybe I kind of set my expectations so low on him that maybe it was easy to kind of come come up. But Tony Blanco's look look pretty pretty good this year better than I expect, you know, cause the big thing was like, he like set a record or something like that for like exit velocity numbers down there in, in the Dominican last year. Mm. <clears throat> but his like whiff rate was like, they, they were talking like it, it, his hit tool was barely going to be like a 30 or something like that coming state side. So like you hear that and then it come, he comes up and then you kind of get in your head. Okay. Well, if someone can throw a breaking ball in the strike zone, like he's probably just going to, not have any idea what to do with it. Yeah. Like that's that's what we're gonna be looking at. And from what I've seen from him, he he has some of his hardest hit balls against breaking balls this year. Like he had he had a stretch earlier this week. He had a he had a foul ball that went 121 miles an hour off the bat. Which for <laughs> for those wondering like that's that's absolutely insane for the complex league. Like people in that on that level don't hit the ball that hard. You almost wonder if like yeah. that's even accurate. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, it, it made me quite. It made me yeah. question it too at first. Yeah, it was it was foul ball 121. I think it was two pitches later. He, it was another breaking ball. He hit 112 for a home run. 
Yep. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I have it up here. The, I was going to say it. Yeah. The power is every bit of what they were they were saying, and he's hitting stuff that I didn't expect him to hit coming into it. What is it? He had six hits last week, I think, and only like four games played. A double home run, a couple RBIs. Um, I mean, they, you still see the swing and miss here and there and stuff like that. Right. It, it does look like he the, – the main thing that it looks like he's having issues with is, like, if a pitcher can go out there and sequence their pitches right and stuff like that, he gets a little lost in that. And, like, he, get, he gets caught guessing sometimes. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, he just turned 19 kind of thing. Yeah. So – but he's he's a he's a giant giant human. Like he yeah. hits the ball really hard, and just fun to see when he runs into one. Just like there's that excitement. It's like okay, well, how hard did he hit this one? Kind of stuff. And, right. Yeah, it's refreshing about- to see. It's refreshing to see the because because like you, I think my expectations were also very low. For Blanco, I mean, thirty-seven point six percent strikeout rate in the in the DSL last year. So coming stateside, it was like that's probably not going to get better, but it has. Yeah. Like he yeah. he's still striking out a lot. Like it's not yeah. that he's he's like he's not a contact hitter by any means. Yeah. Like he's going to yeah. take his swing. He's going to get get his swings and misses. But yeah, it has been incurred. Like he's he's taken a pretty giant step forward from from the DSL to the complex league and. Yeah, I'm curious to see how he can kind of just progress through the system. I always get just, you never know with levels this low. Like th- we've seen players just dominate the complex yeah. league or dominate the, the DSL. And then once you get into to, to low A ball, it just, things fall apart. So I, I want to see him like on the Marauders and see what can happen. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I guess with the complex league ending here in about a month or so, is he someone you think they push like that? Or you think that after the complex, they'll be like, you know what? This was a good I step. Think, yeah. I think there's, I mean, I guess there's, there's a chance with it. They have, they have some other guys there that are like moving around at first base and stuff like that right now in Bradenton that I probably wouldn't expect to get moved up to Greensboro. So, yeah. <clears throat> um, you know, they got like Axial Plaz. He's kind of split in time at, at first. Eddie Rodriguez, uh, uh, Valdez, when he comes back, they've all kind of been split in time at first base and stuff like that. So, and I don't expect any of them to, to get to Greensboro by the end of the year. So you can always kind of, okay, man, good job. Because I'm sure there'll be some backfield scrimmaging and, and, and stuff like that going on throughout the, like, just, I don't see anything wrong with just like keeping them there and, and and stuff like that. Maybe by the end of the year, maybe you do give them the, like the last week or something like that. Be like, here, mm-hmm. go ahead, get your feet wet. You're going to be here next year. Right. But um, it, that kind of stuff probably was probably a lot easier to, to predict last year than, than it is this year, just because it's the first year where everything's moved up and stuff like that. So yeah, we'll, we'll kind of see. I, the hitters probably more likely to to move up than than the pitchers at this point. Yeah, cool. Sounds good. Yeah. Walmart. Can I can I sneak one thing in real quick? There you Just go. Real quick. Yeah. Charles McAdoo. Yeah. Charles McAdoo. We don't have to go a long discussion. It's it's small sample. It's only eight games, but like this was the moment we've been waiting for. Right. We're not going to trust it. We're not going to trust it. Let's wait till double A. <laughs> My guy has made an impression. He's now in double A in the eight games. He has eight hits and six for extra bases. Mm-hmm. Kit, I, I, I only want this take. Can we officially be officially excited about Charles McAdoo? I mean, I mean, it's. I mean, if you're you're a fan, always oh, you can always be <laughs> excited for it. If you want me to, if you want me to uh, damper on things, like I'm gonna damper things and then I'm gonna bring it back up. He okay. did strike out All seven right. times last week. There are some times to where like he was taking some pretty bad swings there, but he also drew seven walks. So, like, okay, he struck out a bunch, but he was also drawing a lot of, or yeah. So, yeah, I mean, he's he's clearly the best hitting prospect best performing hitting prospect in the, in the system right now. I don't think there is any question to that at the, at this point. I think, 
I think if you still want to be cautioned with it, like I'm pretty sure Matt Frazier and Matt Gorski, they had fairly okay stints in double A coming off of what they did in Greensboro. So maybe, but way I mean, a, way to put a damper on everything, comparing him to Matt that, Frazier and Matt Gorski. That, that's what I do, right? <laughs> Let's get him <laughs> off the show now. I'm done with you. That's fair. I, I, I'd probably do that too. <laughs> What's Nola Jeffy up these days? We'll get him on next week instead. <laughs> I'm surprised he's, he's on different time than us. I can't believe he's up this early for this. Yeah, he really always gets up this. early for this stuff in Central Time Zone. But all right, well, I want I wanted your check in on him because what a debut! Yeah, it was a good it was a good first uh, first week and a half in yeah. Double A yeah. for him for sure. Yeah. Definitely be excited, but I, I definitely be excited ab- ab- about it. And then you want to see you want, and then you want to see the kind of struggles too with like like the strikeouts and stuff like that, because you want to see how he responds to those kind of struggles at a higher level and stuff like that. You could say he That's probably fair. wasn't pushed that way in in high A. So if he's striking out this much and he's still making the adjustments to, and he's still sticking to his game. Even with the strikeouts and draw walk, he you know he he doesn't start pressing and and over swinging and that leads to a bigger hole and, and stuff like that. So he's sticking to his game, and and it's and it's working for him. So yeah, good stuff. Um, so all those people who were saying, um, just call him up. He can't be any worse than Sawinski. <laughs> I mean, pump the brakes a little bit, maybe. Yeah, I mean, it yeah. might be correct though. It might be correct. Does it make it the right decision? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just because they do something like that doesn't mean it's the right call. Right. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, we appreciate you, Murphy. Um, again, Bucks on Deck Substack. Make sure you're subscribed if you haven't yet. Um, your podcast comes out on Tuesday. So if you want to go more in depth on the system, uh, Bucks on Deck podcast every Tuesday with uh, with, with Murphy and Nola. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a really, really good listen. So I recommend it. But yeah, really, definitely appreciate everything. Um, and then Twitter too, uh, at underscore Murphy Murph eighty eight Murphy eighty eight. Yep, Murphy eighty eight. All right, there we go. So, yep. Yeah, thanks for thanks for hopping on this morning, man. Of course, man. Yeah. Thanks for having me. <laughs>